Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be going over my luxury wish list from last year. And I will talk about the items that I ended up checking off my list, as well as the items that I removed from my list. And also things that I maybe replaced with some other alternative. If you have not already watched my wish list video from last year, I will link it below. I also did a like mid-year check-in because there were some changes that I kind of made to it. And I also recently posted my entire luxury bag collection video, and that really gave me the chance to go through my entire collection and reassess and reevaluate. Also, my entire life has kind of changed since last year. If you have been following my channel, I recently quit my nine to five corporate law job and I am now a full-time stay-at-home mom. I no longer need a huge work tote bag that can carry files and my laptop because I am home. So any luxury wish list of mine going forward will be very different than in my previous years working in the office. I'll start with Dior. The very first item on my wish list from last year was the Toit de Jouy blanket. And I had the chance to go into the store and I tried it on. And when I say tried on, I you know wrapped myself with it and sat on the couch and it just was so comfortable and gorgeous. I passed on it because it was something like $2,000 and watching that video now, I looked it up and it is over 3000 something. And the reason is that it's made of cashmere, which is great. I mean, it is a beautifully made blanket. I love the design. I love the Toit de Jouy design, but over 3000 for a cashmere blanket. I ended up not getting it last year and I have since removed it from my wish list. I will likely no longer need it or want it. I ended up getting the Hermes Avalon blanket right there and then the pillow. And I really like that a lot more. So yeah, I really no longer need or want the Dior blanket. I don't need a cashmere luxury blanket for $3,000. Another item was the Chez Moi slippers. And it was like this really beautiful crushed velvet, really like house slippers. And I did end up getting it last year because I was working from home remotely. And sometimes if I just wanted a nice little luxury fix, then I just wear it around the house. They also pack very flat. They come in a really cute dust bag. So for traveling, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in a hotel room, I don't want to walk around barefoot on those floors. Even a really nice luxury hotel, you don't know how often they clean those floors, which they probably don't frequently. So I always wear slippers and I often bring my own slippers. So I really like the Dior Chez Moi slippers. So I did get those last year and I use them around the house now and I will likely bring them along with me when I am traveling this year. And then last year, the only Dior bag that I had on my list was the 30 Montaigne. I already owned the large book tote and the small book tote, which by the way, they changed up the sizes of book totes. So now the old small, size is now the new medium because there's an even smaller size. So I knew that I really didn't need another Dior book tote, but I really did like the 30 Montaigne. I like that it can be worn as a crossbody bag. It can be converted to a shoulder bag. The leather shoulder strap can also be worn as a belt. And I really like that it had a slip pocket. It just fits so many of my needs for a bag. If you watched my luxury bag collection video, you would know that I did end up getting the 30 Montaigne. So I got it in the navy oblique. I absolutely love it. I love the oversized buckle here. I like the outside pocket for my phone. And there's the leather shoulder strap. And what I also really liked about this bag was that I was able to get it at the old price. There was a couple of price increases, I think, since I first posted my wishlist video last year. And I went to purchase it and the one they had in store was dirty. So I had to wait for a new one to arrive. And so by the time a new one arrived, they had the price increase but they were very kind enough at the boutique to honor the old price increase. But don't always count on that happening on the boutique honoring the old price because unless you were actively attempting to purchase it at the old price and but for you know a defect or a stain or damage with the one they had, they probably won't honor the old price. LV just underwent a recent price increase a huge price increase and some people were asking you know will they honor the old one because they were looking at getting you know a, a certain style and no i mean unless you were legitimately <laughs> trying to purchase it lv likely won't honor a price increase just because you were considering you know in your head wanting to get a bag but luckily they were able to honor the old price so i was able to check off my one and only dior bag on my wish list last year and then from louis vuitton i had a couple items on my list the first was a hard-sided trunk. 
And ideally, I would have loved a vintage trunk, like a, one of those really big ones that you can put glass on top and use as a coffee table. And maybe once we're in our forever home, I will seriously look into purchasing that because those are kind of hard to find and then they're also hard to move and you know you don't want to damage it, I guess. So I kind of put off to the side the very large oversized trunks, the vintage trunk, but I did tentatively have on my list a smaller hard-sided trunk, either the Boat Chapeau hot box or the Boat Pharmacy, which is almost like a toiletry beauty cosmetic hard-sided case or a jewelry case. And what's great about purchasing a brand new trunk from LV is that you have the option of having one of their artisans custom paint any design on it. You submit, you know, an inspiration picture and it can be of your family or of a pet or a floral design or whatever. There are some very creative designs that some people have come up with and I just think it's such a great way to customize it. But I ended up not getting it. <laughs> and then with this recent price increase, I don't know if I really see myself getting a custom trunk. You know, we'll see what the future holds. That's not on my short term list for now. I already own the LV Nice vanity train case, like the larger size which is kind of hard sided on the bottom and the top. And you know, I think it's okay for now. I also had on my list an LV crossbody bag, like a bum bag or the men's, I think Christopher or Discovery bum bag. And I did not get it last year, but I did recently get this League of Legends bum bag. And I still have the tag on here because I don't know, I'm thinking of returning it, we'll see. I really like the style, but my only complaint or issue with it is there were some very large areas of white or the silver, you know, light colored areas that are on the parts that would get scuffed easily based on my experience with this type of a crossbody fanny pack type bag. With this, I would want to wear it all the time. So if it gets scuffed easily around that parts, it just would, be a little more heartbreaking than my less expensive, you know, spray ground crossbody bag that I wear all the time where the canvas is cracking. So I wouldn't want it to get dirty, but we'll see. I do like the style. I like the top handle here. I like that the back has this large zipper. It'll look really nice once the leather gets darker. So I'm still thinking about it, but I am leaning towards keeping it, especially because I think that they discontinued the bum bag completely. So I think I would get some use out of this, but I am officially able to say that I did check this off my list because I did purchase it. And I did purchase it from 24S, which is a website owned by LVMH. And I was able to get 10% off of this. So I think it's a pretty good deal. And then from Chanel, I did have the Chanel 19 on my wish list last year. I initially passed on the large white iridescent ivory colored Chanel 19 because I figured, first of all, I wanted the smaller size. I think the smaller size looked better on my frame. The large was just a little too big. And then I passed on the white because I was like, I really wanted a darker one, you know, that I would wear more casually. I don't know, I was, I was really contemplating <laughs> that decision. So I passed on the white one, but I did get a 19 and it was not in the dark denim or the black leather that I initially thought I would get because I got this iridescent pink 19, which I absolutely love. So I totally went against my thought process initially, which was that I wanted a darker casual everyday bag. However, I have been wearing this almost every day since I got it, not just going out like date nights, but just Casually, just running errands. I really like this top handle. This bag is so gorgeous. It's so stunning in real life. It's raining today, so the light isn't the best right now, but you guys, it is so pretty. It's so nice. I post a lot more pictures on my Instagram, so follow me on Instagram, by the way. It's at a heated mess. And I think the pictures on my Instagram capture the color a lot more beautifully and realistically, but it is so nice. I'm so glad I was able to add the 19 to my list, but I'm not necessarily completely checking off another 19. <laughs> Maybe not this year, but we'll see. But I definitely love the style and I've gotten a ton of use out of this already. And then from Hermes, I had tentatively on my list, the Birkin or Kelly. And I did not get either bag, but I did get one bag. I did get this Hermes grooming tote bag and I absolutely love, love this bag. And this has completely replaced almost my Chanel Denim Deauville that I carry with me on all my travels. This has been a staple in all my trips recently. I traveled quite a bit last year. It's just the perfect bag. It's a great mom bag. It's a great diaper bag. It has pockets all over, all over. I love pockets. We love side water bottle pockets. Inside it has this removable pouch. It's got this longer shoulder strap. It's got very comfortable 
rolled handles here that you can wear over your shoulder. And it's just super durable. I love it. I love the color. And so I truly love this bag so much. So even though I did have the Hermes Birkin, you know, on my kind of a wish list, I did let my Hermes essay know that I had, you know, my eyes on a Birkin and we'll see. But I wasn't really aggressively pursuing a Birkin and emailing and texting and asking for, you know, when <laughs> one will come in for me. I really didn't care. Like if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. It's totally fine. So, you know, we'll see if it happens this year, but I'm so happy I got this Hermes grooming tote bag. So I did let him know, okay, I might consider a Kelly, but I will probably not anymore because I ended up getting this from Chanel last year. This is the Chanel Coco Handle in the iridescent blue with this really pretty rainbow colored Chanel clasp. Honestly, I really like the Coco Handle. I think it's so cute and feminine and dainty. And it's a very similar silhouette to the Hermes Kelly. So I probably will pass if he does offer a Kelly, you know, whatever. I don't really, I'm not in the market, I think, for that right now. So I really do prefer this Chanel Coco handle to the Hermes Kelly. So yeah, I think this was probably my winner from last year, even though this was not even on my wish list because I didn't even know this bag existed. I just saw it in the store and I thought it was such a great, you know, functional bag. So I would say that I was able to check this off my wish list because I did amend my wish list <laughs> to include this. I didn't get a Birkin, but that's totally fine. So after I posted my luxury bag collection video, I also did one where I was talking about the bags I was considering selling and kind of my thought process. I was able to really reassess my entire collection. And so I will probably be downsizing and getting rid of bags that I just don't use. So whenever or if ever, I don't even know if I will <laughs> post my wish list going forward, I probably don't have a lot on the list this time around. But I will say that last year was pretty successful. I was able to get everything I wanted, remove things that I decided I really no longer needed, and I found some hidden gems along the way, especially in this Hermes. So let me know how your wish list from last year went, if you were able to get everything you wanted, if you changed it along the way. I think it really helps to write down exactly what you want and then kind of reassess as you go because you maybe realize that you don't need certain things that you might think you want. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed helping me revisit my wish list from last year. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.